Once Barbarossa starts, the die is cast, and you know the the flavor of the game pretty much is decided at that point by what happens there. We have the minor allies coming in, and I was mistaken. They all provide troops. Well, not Bulgaria, but Romania and Hungary do. Uh, Romania gives two infantry and a tank. Our, uh, Hungary, one of each, and Finland provides three infantry up in Finland. I can, of course, start shipping Finnish troops or troops to Finland through here. The way I'm rolling it, though, only if I have the navy here. I'm not going to be able to do that otherwise. I don't really need to, though. Uh, that's not by the rolls. Right now, though, I got my uh, shots with my fleets. First a two-pointer. That's going to be a hit. And then a U-boat. And that is not. So... I get one hit on the ally production for next turn again. <sighs> I gotta dig this guy out or he's destroyed. And I gotta look to see what I can do. See, if I can take Moscow and this hex and these hexes, I cut these two armies off. So that would be fantastic. Can I do all that? I don't know. I've got some extra troops, but I also have... My commitment down here to the uh, Panzer Army Africa that I kind of, you know, you get sucked into that, right? <laughs> right now, it's got four armor. I could start pulling it out, but then it's vulnerable to that eighth army, which isn't terribly powerful, but can definitely do some harm. So I got to do some thinking there uh, whether or not, you know, maybe I want to give up on, uh, on the med. Trick to help remind me, I'm flipping these southern armies over so I don't just absorb their strength points. That could cause some real issues. I could do the same with the Panzer Army Africa, but well, it's probably a good idea too. Just to remind me, hey, I can't do these at will because I'm trying to assemble my main force here. That's going to be my primary goal. And I don't want to think too much about those units except as a separate aspect of it. I'm going to try pushing that Raider fleet back out again. Oh. First I move it here, then I try to push it out, and it succeeds. Now that puts some danger here, so I'm going to pull back from there. I don't really need to be pushing on Leningrad. My plan here is north and south. Well, north and center are my two big armies. They're going to push through and try to both hit Moscow from the two directions. We'll see if that works. I've got some pretty good forces here. The center's got seven armor. North has six. Where's south? South's this stuck unit I can't use, which sucks. Um, and then I'm also going to be launching an attack with the Panzer Army. Africa here. So these are going to be my moves. This move is easy and once I make it through here, and that's trivial as well. So let's start. Panzer Army Africa gets hit by the 8th Army. Uh, no air power, so I've got a three that I'm facing. And we get hit for one. We make our swing back with five strength points. Yep, no leader. Okay. Four, that's going to be a hit. And the eighth army is down to the little tiny one strength point, which I should be able to hit. I got four armor. Against one, well, it's only a one to four that I get in there, but I do. And that pushes these guys back. I think I can retreat across that crossing arrow. <sighs> Game is tough. Yeah. That means I can't launch an attack here. I can grab supply here. I don't think the Brits are going to get lost, so I'm going to push back into here. And that takes a point of production. And these two, which I'm going to uh, negate out by putting this here. That's not really a minus. The production's hooked up back and if I get the Suez. But that's three points of production I've taken away from the Allies. And that is big. <laughs> it's real big. But I can't make it across here without starting to build some amphibious units. And those are not trivial. 
I've got a cost of what six for building them. Uh, getting one and shipping it down there might be worthwhile though because the Brits didn't shift over. Hmm. Do they want to retreat across there? Well, what's my naval movement through the Red Sea? It's only one strength point per. Uh, I only have two strength points. You know what? I'm pulling back. I'm gonna I'm gonna basically give up uh, this territory here. Now the Germans have this hex, but this hex is still British. We'll just mark those all like that. There's nowhere I can really continue going with the uh, African army. So I'll leave it there until maybe I can uh, do a naval assault. If I can, that opens up a nice entry into the Soviets, but that's tough to do. The center army has seven tanks. One through seven works. I don't even need a leader, but I have Manstein there. That'll help. So I move into there, and we'll take that hex. And that's my first attack there. The North Army's pushing into here. Um, that is a six. One to six, but I have the modifier, so I'm able to get into there as well. The hard move is going to be this one, because here, well... Hopefully, I'll get the assaults. All right. Now, secondary moves for all my armies, and yet as I stripped uh, Italy again. I'm going to have to build units there. But my secondary movements, I'm going to try to move into this hex. I'm going to move the center army first, see how far I can get. Now, uh, maybe that's not wise. Yeah, I think I'm going to move the north army first, see where that goes and then see what I can do with the center army. So the North Army has seven against a one is one to seven? No, six. One to six, it's only, uh, I've moved one hex. I cancel that out with the leader. I'm okay, I can keep moving. So I push into this hex. I thought that was gonna be a one to five. And now I can hit Moscow. Well, Moscow gets to hit me back. Moscow's got eight armies. And the potential of a leader? Nope. That was a goth there. Uh, oh, big hit. Three hits. That in and of itself may not mean too much except my ability to do damage. But there's a Rommel death chance which succeeds. So there goes Rommel. Again. Um, all right. Well... I get my firing in. I'm at 10 strength points. They have no air in Moscow. I only do two. That's beginning to look like, well, I'm not counting on taking it with this unit particularly, but it's beginning to look scary. I would love to be able to take it. I've got six armor against six. That's not going to work. No chance, no matter what. So I'm stopped. I gotta think about this sucker. Center army has seven armor. First hex is friendly. That'll be one to eight. Second hex will be one to five up here, and then I can attack. I think that's what I think I'm gonna go for it because I get so much if I win this. But you know, this is high risk. I may be losing the war here, basically. But I may be. Uh, I may be winning it. Oh, no, the Romanian army doesn't exist. I may be winning it just as easily, right? Oh, I didn't add these production points. Those will help. Okay. Uh, first roll, I believe, is automatic. Second one, seven armor against one is one to seven minus two. Hey, I have a leader. It's free. I get in there automatically. Bonus. Now I hit Moscow, it does not get to attack me. Unfortunately, I don't have air, so I won't be reducing it if I win the attack, if I win the uh, uh, advance, but I've got 10 strength points hitting it at minus one to begin with. 10 strength points, that's three more hits on the Moscow army. And in Russia, you want to focus too, right? You don't want to do what Hitler did in an attack in every which direction. You want to take something. Okay, now the center army has seven armor up against three. 
this is not trivial. It's a one through four. Make it a one, make it a one or a two. That's all I got. And I'm in trouble if I don't make it because now I've got two big army groups that the Russians can cut off. And in fact, they could cut off this third one too because I have no supply under any of that. And that's where this gets really weird. I didn't make it, so I'm done and I'm stuck in a crap ass position here. Uh, we already know the Panzer Army Africa is not going anywhere. How do I replace this? You know, how do I... <laughs> this is the German line here still. It's just ugly. And it would be ugly if I had taken this for the Russians. Very ugly. You got to take your crap shots though, right? That whole aspect, the take the high risk attacks, that's what skews this game. It makes it really, really weird. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to build my army. Uh, I just, I had to come back and mention that simple fact that, damn it, you know, it just always opens up to something that's completely ahistorical. Is that just me and other players I play with? Can you play it more carefully? You really can't. Because you can't as people have pointed out, you can't advance along the front. You don't have enough army groups to hold the entire front with any strength. You don't have enough strength points to do it, even if you had extra army groups on the board. Now, you have 12. Takes nine here. That means you got three more to play with. That's not too bad, actually. You know, you probably need one to defend Germany if the Allies start having amphibious units or something that they could, you know, launch launch a successful invasion with. Right now, they're just not potent enough. Uh, but I find it more that you just don't have the strength points to either, you, you don't have the strength points to do something and hold the line. So you gotta kinda go for these high risk options. Now, I didn't really think too carefully, as I never do in this game, but sometimes I end up cutting off big Russian forces, like, you know, had this succeeded. Uh, and then it's really ugly there too. Now the Russians are gonna cut off big swaths of German forces, so I'd better have a unit capable of freeing all my Germans, right? <laughs> Except for the three points I used to rebuild the, the Suez point, everything is going to Barbarossa, basically. Uh, I've got, uh, in the in Italy, my normal, you know, five points there. For uh, infantry is real cheap, so that's kind of cool. But the mechs, I haven't gotten very cheap. No tech rolls, no tech advancement. The rest is in the OKW big force there. That uh, should be enough to free up my units, I hope. But now the Russians get their shot at it. Now they do not get the Siberian army until next turn which is a shame and they could really use that, but yeah. Japanese events, etc., cetera, were somewhat tying it down historically. So they just put it as a fixed date. I do have the big Siberian production coming into play though. So whatever I lose or risk here, I'm able to build up a big army to replace it. So now the Russians are able to play for the real money and we're gonna see what they can do with that. Germans stuck with these thin little supply lines. I'm striking them both. Boom and boom into those. They didn't capture any new supply sources, so they weren't able to go further. I could put a little control marker here. No harm in doing that. I didn't manage to connect my lines at Moscow, which is what I wanted to do. That was the high risk option I took. And now the Russian army gets to try to steamroll over them. And then we get to see the Germans try to save their armies again. And everything just gets sucked into Barbarossa. Uh, which, eh. You know, like I said, it, once you cast the die on it, the game's decided there. The way I play, at least. Alright, let's start off with the Caucasus army. This is the more important, and I've put a little bit more armor in this army. Um... This hex is absolutely vital to me, so I'm going to strike it. I have 12 strength points. Well, 
I only have uh, four armor there. That's not going to take it guaranteed. So I have 12 strength points hitting and I have Zukov. And it's guaranteed to hit the hex. So that's gone. And now I've got four armor against a zero. I succeed in taking this hex. Bang. And maybe I'm a terrible player and I just don't get the game. But my feeling is if you try to do broad front advances, they get cut to shreds anyway. Um, now, I want to keep advancing. I want to make the Germans as, I want to push the Germans as far back as I can. Um, now they can move their navy in and get supply off of here, but maybe I can cut them uh, mostly out of play <laughs> with these armies. Of course, this is my big armor army here moving forward, and it's probably going to be cut out of supply next, right? All right, so now I've got four armor going against a one hex. I only get a one to four here. That's it. One to four indeed, because uh, I need to uh, I, I counteract the hex. I, oh, no. I've gone one hex. I get to go with my next unit. The white Russians get to go. They have ten firepower. They do not have a leader because Zukov is the only Russian leader. And that's going to automatically knock out this hex. Now I only have two armor against the zero, which is a one to four to advance into there. However, again, I succeed and I've cut off both the big German army groups now. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to continue with the Caucasus army, slicing into uh, this hex. It's got four armor, uh, one to four, and again, that's at even because Zukov is there. I make it in. And the Russians keep rolling. It's one to three into here, and I get to devastate some production. Let's go for it. Nah. Oh, well. You know, <laughs> stuck out here, ready to be cut off, and more silliness happens. What about this white Russian army? What do I want to do with it? I don't particularly want to hit the North Army. That's still powerful. Uh, being out of supply doesn't matter, except that you get wiped out if you, you are. Uh, what I probably want to do is make it harder to connect things up. Making it harder means this hex, I guess. I've only got two armor, though, which means I only am going to be able to advance on a one there. Probably want to try to save this unit. It's got a lot of uh, ability, but it's used up its firepower for the turn. Hmm. Well, what I definitely don't want to do is get it up near the border where it can be uh, cut off. I'll try to move it towards Leningrad. Maybe I can't move out of Leningrad if I do that. Two into a friendly hex is one to five. I'm a one to four because of tiredness. And now I'm a one to three into Leningrad and I don't make it, so I'm stopped there. That's the Russian army's turn. <laughs> but now I have 21 big production points where I can defend Leningrad and Moscow. I could build this back into a supply center, but that's just too risky. I'm not sure what to do with that, really. Uh, I'm not feeling threatened by anything except this unit getting cut off. And next turn, I'm going to have more armor. So I'm going to build up some armor as well. And I'm going to work on my technologies, but I also want to make sure that I have enough infantry. Uh, I, I want to make sure I have enough armor to cut two more slices in the German line and enough infantry to hold uh, my capitals. Well, I spent everything on just ground troops. Uh, I think four armor only. Putting them here and here with the white Russian army here, Leningrad's a little more protected and uh, six infantry. Does that make sense? No, five armor and six infantry, I guess. Uh, maybe I built more than six infantry. I've got 15 here. I had six, so that's nine infantry. <laughs> yeah. Nine infantry and four armor. Um, 
That gives me really powerful positions in these two spaces. The white Russian army sitting here with 10 strength points. You know, even if I smack Leningrad, I'm not going to break through here or anything. So those guys are safe. Moscow with 10 strength points is pretty safe. The only thing really at risk is this army, and it's going to get cut off. But I got a lot of force ready to slice up whatever the Germans do. Barbaros has failed here. The game's essentially over, except for the question of who wins. And now comes kind of the interesting stuff. The Allies don't want the Soviets to do any better. They've already, you know, they've stopped Barbarossa. Uh, so, with the Soviets sitting on 21 points and the Allies sitting at 13, if Germany falls at this point or any time in the near future, the Allies are in a lot of trouble. They have to start building up and launching their invasion now. This is, of course, the risk. Uh, they wish they could send points to the Germans, in a sense. They really are in a lot of trouble here. And that's what happens when you do a high-risk attack like this uh, with the Germans, I guess. Well, we get to go to the Allies, and I don't know what they're going to do. Because they got real problems and have to build up and try to take France, and that's probably impossible. But putting that extra pressure on, well, that just makes... Germany weaker, right? Well, now we're entering crazy time. The Brits, because they have to do something to try to win the game before the Russians do, move their fleet up here, and they're going to launch an attack. Now, where are they going to launch it? Attacking Germany, if they talk to the Germans, the Germans are going to make it clear, we will destroy you if you, you know, we'll destroy whatever you land. We can afford to do that. Well, but there are places that they can land stuff that the Germans won't destroy them, right? In particular, um, what they need to do is they need to gain production points. Not because they need the production, although they'd love that, uh, but because they need it to balance out what the Russians have. If the Russians have three to two, they get the ultimate victory, right? For the Allies to get anywhere here, well... They need to have at least as many points as the Russians have. Right now the Russians have 21, call it 22 from this, and they've got more coming in. With whatever they conquer, and with that big Siberian, uh, there's going to be four more points eventually in Siberia. So that's, uh, that's a real problem. I see two options. One is the landing in Portugal to prepare for an invasion of Spain. Or, you know, I've already got a foothold in Gibraltar, so I don't really need that. So of more interest may be the landing in Norway at this point. There's nothing the Germans can do about it without amphibious troops, and they haven't built any yet. So, I can't sail up into the Baltic and take Norway, but I can land and get myself a foothold there. Do I want to do that? I mean, what else is of value? The landing in France or, or the low countries, I'm going to get repulsed. Same with Denmark. There really aren't a lot of options here. I could shift over to Gibraltar and try to make a landing in Greece. And that the Germans would then... Uh, gain control of northern Greece and could push me out. The whole bonus of Spain or Norway is that they're sort of invulnerable right now. Now Norway has three strength points uh, that they could just throw in whatever invasion hex I have. Now I could blow up whatever there is using my fleet. So that's not terribly valuable. I'm just trying to think of what the hell I can do with the Brits. Uh, I may be best off not doing the invasion yet this turn. Um, and instead, trying to build up for an attack out of Gibraltar, which I could make. So what I bought was some cheaper infantry and air. My hope is that the Germans can hold the Russians off. I'm not going to contest uh, the Germans much. In fact, I'm pulling out of... Uh, the Near East here in order to uh, I threw an air unit 
coming out through the Red Sea. I'm just going to surrender that. None of that matters too much to me except morale-wise, and I don't think the Germans can bring me down anymore. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to land yet, but I don't want to do it quite this turn. U.S. is coming in soon. I can start shipping their stuff over. Of course, that has to suffer U-boat attacks. So I started upping some values, say ASW and stuff like that. I'm going to roll for the tack air. See if I can get that cheaper. And I can. It was at two. I bet you it just goes down to one. I think that's as low as it'll ever get. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And I'm going to roll for mechs. Which my mechs are expensive. And that's a success. That should go down to three. We're going to need mechs for the war. <laughs> And they go away. And now the question is things like ASW air defense. I've got points in them, but I'm not I'm not gonna roll quite yet. <sighs> Although the ASW is a problem not having that. Uh, this is gone. I already paid that out of the point total. So yeah, we're preparing for some twisted version of Overlord that's gonna probably take some neutral out. <laughs> And now it's winter time, which is a tough time to try to save these poor German armies up here. But, gotta do it. If at first you don't succeed with high risk options, try again. I forgot to do these guys, I have to roll them. Um, they're both two point firepower actions. Neither one does anything. The fleet, mm, I need to reposition it here. <coughs> and drive the Russian fleet uh, in order to prevent the Russian fleet from uh, hurting me because I needed to pull an infantry unit out of Finland. I'm only allowed to pull one unit per turn out of the Baltic. I use that uh, to build up. Basically, I'm throwing everything, a couple of strength points from North Africa, all to go up and uh, fill these two armies. My goal, this hex is absolutely vital. I may or may not get it. That's uh, Army Group B there. It's only got four armor. If it's a zero, I can only hit it on a one or a two, you know, but uh, I could have increased my odds of saving everything, but I've also got Army Group C here with six armor, which has a shot of making it to here. And basically my view is I could still win Barbarossa if I can take both. If I can't, the Russian army is just going to crush me. You know, it's if I, if I just say take this hex, they're just gonna slice me anyhow. Um, so I kind of feel like I have to knock out the Caucasus army with all of its firepower and ability. And in order to have a shot of doing that, I have to take this high risk option. So those are my attacks launching. I'm not doing anything with the Panzer Army Africa. Does the 8th Army still exist? Yeah, it still has an infantry in it. Okay. So, well, in B's case, they're definitely doing the assault here. They have nine strength points and a potential roller or leader, which doesn't count. Now there's plus four to this die roll, as there is with anything, but that's sufficient. It's going to be an automatic knockout with nine strength points. So now I have the move in, and this is where it gets tough. I've only got four units. I need a one or a two to get in there, and that's absolutely vital to saving the North Army. I make it, and that's sweet. Let's put a control marker there. So now my army is saved. Now the question comes to, can I save Barbarossa as a whole? Army C here has six armor. It would need a one or a two to take this hex. Well, if I don't take this hex, I don't get a shot at this hex. But I'd only get a shot at this hex on a one if I go in there. <sighs> so six armor against a one is a one or a two. And that's what I'm going to go for, because I need both hexes for it to mean anything. I do not get it, so I don't get my uh, advance there. And that army stopped. Okay, but I saved things. I get to keep moving with this army. It's got four armor. I could go into a friendly hex on, I believe, a one or a two. 
And this is important because this is a supply hex. I don't want to lose that hex to the Russians. That keeps me a powerful attacking force in place to cut the Ruskies off. But their whole army is still available. I failed to cut off the Caucasus army. And that, you know, this is, this is the result I could have pretty much guaranteed. But I didn't want uh, just that. I wanted the shot at cutting the army. <laughs> Pretty much the, the firepower of the Russian army, well, not in half, but maybe taking a third of it away or so. What, four to nine, yeah, a little under a third. Well, I still got 37 points to build. That should do me something. I could actually build up some of the fins because I'm a little worried that they might fall. That's very little risk to the Russians going after this hex. We'll see. All right, well, for production, I still got a lot of points of production here, so. Uh, I built myself up my Italian army again. I built, I still have, I have to draw for leaders, see if I get Rommel or something. But I also built myself five armor, five infantry, and two tack air over here in Berlin. That makes it pretty damn, uh, That that's my next turn's, you know, fighting force, right? Uh, you know what? I don't want to lose. Uh, I don't want to lose Finland. Three strength points. And it's no guarantee, but it strengthens it a little bit. Two doesn't do me damn much of anything. Um, this hex is the weak point. Obviously, the Russians are going to take that. The question is, can they take this? Now, for five points, I could have built a fort there, but that wouldn't help me defend it this turn. So it's always kind of a, geez, you know, why why bother? Um, unless you're able to, like the Russians, building up, say, Leningrad as a fortress or someplace where you know the enemy's not going to, not ready to hit. So, you know, the Germans could start building the West Wall up or something. Mm. It's a high expense, though, at five points a unit. I also did some tech uh, advances here. And among them, I've got a roll on the mech table, which I could get down. Now, that may actually help other people more than it helps me. The problem, I may not want to roll it because I don't want to get my mechs too much cheaper. Right now they're expensive for the Russians to build. So I'm gonna leave this kicking around here, I think. Other things, well, I didn't really improve them. I'm uh, at the lowest price for infantry, so for both the Russians and the Germans, I can just move that over and use it as a control marker or something if need be. Ah, yeah. It's time for the real Russian counter below now. Although, with the German fleet there, yeah, I'm just asking to get challenged. So I'm going to pull that back into port. It could have attacked me last time. Not terribly sure. You know, the odds aren't that great in either direction. Neither side has a very big fleet. So, yeah. But I'd rather not lose it. You know, it's my boats. I don't want to. I don't want to have them. So I've prepared the army of the Baltic to go into Finland. It's not huge, but it may be big enough to get me there. It'd be kind of a cool bonus if it does. The other armies, the White Russian and First Ukrainian, are just these big infantry armies. They're planning on smashing this. The army of Moscow is going to drive through and do the actual movement. Another option would be to try to cut the Baltic coast here. Um, which might actually be a better move for the Baltic army. Just keep cutting away the German uh, position here. I think that's actually more useful to take the coastline hexes, get them out of German control. This hex is actually under German control too. I just don't have it marked as such. But if I can, I don't know if I need it there. Jeez, I don't know what to do with this unit. <laughs> uh, because 
you know, taking these hexes, this one's of some value, but this one, well, the Germans are almost as close from here, so I'd have to slice down through Poland. So I'm going to go for Finland, try to knock out that rear area. Uh, I think that's more valuable overall. We'll see, because if the Moscow army has a little bit of all kind of toys and Zukov in command can push this back then maybe it can do something else the danger of course is always you know you leave open a pathway when you're doing things like this so if Moscow pushes to here then there's a pathway up here which may be a reason to hold that hex It's just so tough. Um, but I can't completely control this in Leningrad. So again, I think I'm going to go with the Finland. So our attacks, and I'm not attacking out of Leningrad. That means I have additional strength points in Leningrad. Moscow, I've got filled up, so I'm not going to. So my attacks declared are going to be these two against there, this against there, and this against there. Winter's no problem for the Russians. There is no mud in this game, which of course feels a little funny. All right, let's start our attacks. The Baltic against one hex. I've got seven armor against a one point. I can go in there with no problem. Moscow, likewise, I've got... Ooh, only six armor in the Moscow army. Hmm. But against a one-pointer with Zukov, that's no problem. And we're going to push forward there. These two get to attack. And B has to make its decision. Do I fire now and reduce the damage that I take on myself? Or do I... You know, save my firepower against the Moscow army, which is going to be the thing trying to advance. I'm probably not going to be able to cause a whole lot of damage from B. I'm going to be attacking with 7, which is going to cause at most 3 points of damage. 3 points of damage isn't going to get rid of anything but infantry. So I might as well hit one of these uh, armies here. I'll hit the White Russian because the Ukrainians... I might be able to cut them off somehow, who knows. Well, it's hard to tell which would be the best, but with a little, uh, a broad front of several armies together, it's pretty tough to cut that out in, in pieces. If only I was here with a big army, that would be really, really safe. Oh well, uh, I can always drive back down. Um, all right. So let's take our first shot. Well, actually, the Russians kind of get to determine which one gets goes first. So they will go with the Ukrainian first, which means that's what B is going to shoot at. B gets the first shot. Uh, they get all nine of their points in there because there's no air for that army. And I roll a crappy roll. I'm also at plus four anyway. So all I do is one point of damage to the first Ukrainian. And that's going to put me to be able to attack at 9 and then 10 against the Germans. 9 gets me 3 hits. 10 gets me 3 more hits. So I do 6 hits to Army B. It's going to go down to 1 armor. Yeah. All right. And now I can do follow-throughs. Neither of these armies can advance, so they're done for the turn. Now I do the follow-through with the Moscow army. And that has itself its own attack, which can't be, which there's not going to be any uh, comparison against. That's going to have a two-point shot with the air versus air. Because the German air is still there. It doesn't do anything to that. But a 10-point shot against the rest of the Germans. Which is enough to wipe out the remainder of Army B. And now it's a zero hex I'm entering into. With 6 armor. 1 through 8. 1 to 7. But then back up to 1 to 8 because of Zukov. 
Now that's automatic. I'm going to wipe out Army B or Army Group B. Get the marker back if I need it. And Moscow's here. That hex is now devastated. German production from that hex is gone. Yeah. Uh, and now I can keep rolling with those Russians. Not too worried about a naval advance if the Moscow force can march forward. Yeah, except that's a potent force that I don't really want uh, to separate too much. So. I probably want to take this hex. Uh, I've got six armor against a one point hex is a one to six. I've traveled two hexes, so I only have a one to five to get into there. And I do. I think that's about the length of what I can take. The first Ukrainian army isn't too important to me. Getting back to here probably is. So the Moscow army has its six to a zero is a one to nine. I've already moved one, two, three hexes. So I get a free move into here. And now I've actually built something like a front. Now I'll go up to the Baltic army, which can start operating. It's got seven armor against a one hex is one to seven. That's only one to six because of where, because I already went a hex. And now I get to hit the A army. The A, a army gets to fire with its three firepower. It's not in Russia, so there's no penalty on it. And it's Finns, so there shouldn't be. I take one hit on the Baltic. And now it gets to shoot back with nine strength points. No penalty for the Russians, of course. Uh, four, that wipes out the Finnish army. My extra defense there didn't help any. I could have built more units. You're not limited, you know, shipping, etc. is considered sufficient to arm these. But now I get to go forward seven into a zero hex. Is one to eight, but I've moved one, two, so one to six. I move in, I destroy Finland, and Finland is actually captured. All of it falls at once because of that. I take another point off German uh, control, and we got some German morale loss from this. We haven't been seeing enough hexes change for morale to gain. Right now we're seeing losses, though. I want to get this Baltic army moving back off Finland. Um, so I got seven. Going into a friendly hex is one to nine. Eight, seven, six. Five to go into Leningrad. I gotta get out of there. Four to go into this hex. Actually, I could try to push my way down, but I wanna be here, provide a stronger position. No, so I'm overstacked here in Leningrad, but that's fine. And you can see the German army is just wiped out now. Right? I destroyed the big force here. Army C, Group C still exists. There's still power and there's more armies coming. But Germany is going to be spending the game trying to save its armies because that's its power and its ability to go forward. Now, of course, the Soviets need to build up a defense here in Moscow because otherwise the Germans could just march into there and connect that up. Um, they also may want to build, rebuild some supply. They're safe in Finland. They could build that up. There's no German amphibious units. There's nothing else they can really afford to build, though, because anything they build up here, that's just going to be taken back by the uh, Germans. Don't build any more tech. Uh, they built a bunch of troops, huge force here in Moscow. They did build up Finland again. And now I'm going to roll on my tack air. I'm ready to roll for that. I just need a one through three to get an advantage and I get that that goes down to geez does it go down to one yeah and that's the end of tack air for me I've now got the cheapest tack air in the game 
my tanks are still expensive i kind of wanted to boost the value on them but the uh, alternative was hey i can buy cheap tac air and tac air is really awesome <laughs> um, when you're pursuing an enemy army looks real bad for germany onward for the english the need to intervene is still directing what i'm building uh, i went for tech because well I need cheaper infantry, I need my ASW, cheaper armor, cheaper, well, the air defense I didn't increase. Attack air is as low as it gets, I can move that off. I forgot to upgrade my armor. Instead I bought three armor with the thought that if I make a landing in, say, Norway, which is pretty safe, uh, I can grab that using... An amphibious invasion, well, the amphibious invasion is a weird thing because my navy will allow me to come out of Gibraltar to hit Norway. Uh, the navy itself can provide bombardment, so I, it, Norwegians can't defend on the coast. They end up having to defend here, and then I strip that away, take that easily. Then I have a launching point to go into Sweden. That kind of pushes the Russians to want to head up into uh, Scandinavia and start taking stuff there. They may have some interesting goals in mind. This game becomes a strange race if Germany starts to waver the way they have. Anyway, uh, mainly I built the armor up and let's make some rolls. Infantry, I want to get cheap infantry and I succeed in that. I'm down to one point infantry too. Uh, ASWs, I need to get that number down. Uh, Germans are building subs. I can't afford that. And oh crap, I fail. I go back three spaces, which is back to the beginning. Armor, you know, or sorry, amphibs. Uh, I only succeed on a one or a two. I don't want to go with that or with air defense at this point. In fact, I may never roll on air defense simply because that may just make my job easier if the Germans manage to secure things. But one problem with this game is you really kind of don't want to knock out German industry because that just helps the Soviets for the most part. <laughs> you, you got weird goals in this game. All right. I think that's the end of tonight's and today's gaming. We go into Spring 42 has two interesting things happening, one of which doesn't matter. One does, though. The U.S. is going to join, um, and their production increases every turn, just like in Third Reich. It just has this weird automatic increase on top of uh, what it would normally in Third Reich. Well, here, it increases one point a turn, so the first turn it comes in, it has 16, but then it's going to be a point every turn after that. Um, the other ones that Soviet production goes to full strength. Well, that's not the Siberian one. That's if nobody's attacked the Russians yet, and our Russians are doing fine right now. All right, another one going on.